Hello Biology One! This is a very exciting week for us because we finally get to talk about cells! Cells are the smallest living things. What we've been doing so far in the course is sort of building up to this point. So we've talked a lot about chemistry and about molecules, atoms, and all of those things on their own are not considered alive. They're just kind of like building blocks, but cells, cells are where all of that changes. So cells, there is actually a whole cell theory, and what the cell theory says is that cells are the building blocks of living things. All living things are composed of cells. And on top of that, all cells come from earlier cells. So all cells are descended from earlier cells. So we're going to be talking about cells as the basic unit of life. Um, so this is going to be a major theme going forwards. Biology is the study of living things. So really it's the study of cells and what cells do. Um, when we talk about living things, living things can come in two varieties. They can either be single-celled organisms or they could be multi-celled organisms. And that just literally means either their bodies are made up of one individual cell, that's the case for very small things like bacteria, um, or we could be talking about organisms that have lots of cells put together, and that would be um, the case for us in the human body. There are lots and lots of cells that have to work together in order for our bodies to do what they do. So there's going to be a lot of variety in terms of the size scale for the cells that we will encounter this semester. Let me just show you a scale here. So scale, um, come down to the bottom. This is kind of where we started. We started off talking about atoms. We said you can put atoms together to form small molecules, and you can use those as building blocks to build our biological molecules like lipids and proteins. And if we keep going up on this scale, eventually we'll get to viruses, um, and then we get the smallest bacteria. These are the smallest cells that exist. So sort of starting right here. And if we keep going up um, in the size scale, eventually we come to plant and animal cells. And then things like frog eggs, chicken eggs, those are technically one cell. Also, really big cell. Um, so quite a range in terms of sizes. And then if we come up into humans, there are actually some cells in our bodies that are as long as a meter. There's a cell that goes from the base of your, uh, kind of around your, your, your tailbone area. It has to go all the way from that location, down your leg, all the way down to your foot. There's one single cell, it's a nerve cell, that goes that whole distance. So it's a really long and skinny cell. So, cells come in all sorts of shapes and varieties. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this chapter is just sort of going over a generic cell, just trying to get some of the basics down about what's happening inside of these special little units. Looking at this size scale, um, most of the cells that we will encounter are microscopic, so on the micrometer size range. Micrometers are tiny. Um, they are microscopic, which means we need a microscope in order to study most things that go on in cells. So this is a picture of a sort of a generic light microscope. Here are the eyepieces. These are also called the ocular lenses. And what happens if you were trying to study something, you would place your sample on this stage right here. And there's a light bulb down at the bottom. So the light would shine upwards through your sample, and then it would go up through the objective lens, um, come out the, the ocular lens, up here towards your eye. And uh, what these lenses do is magnify the image, what we're, what we're seeing. So that's a very helpful thing for being able to see such tiny objects and what's going on inside of them. So let's just kind of talk generally about cells. All cells, regardless of which type we're talking about, all cells have some basic things in common. So that's a nice place for us to start in terms of our discussion of cells. Cells all have a boundary. They have something that encloses them and separates them off from the rest of the world. And that boundary is called a plasma membrane. I'll be showing you a picture of a plasma membrane in just a minute. Another thing that all cells have is if we move to the inside, just inside the plasma membrane, there's this thick fluid. All cells have this thick fluid. It's called cytosol, and it's kind of a soupy suspension. There are lots of things floating in the cytosol. We'll be looking at all the different things that are floating in the cytosol coming up in this chapter. Two more things that all cells have. They all have DNA. They all have 
uh, nucleic acids um, and those nucleic acids allow the cell to store information in the form of genes. Finally, all cells have something called ribosomes, and we'll talk about what these are a little bit later on. Ribosomes are little machines that help the cell to build proteins. Okay, so now that we kind of know some of the basic general features that we're going to have in the back of our minds as we go forward, um, let's break it down even further. It turns out there are two major categories of cells. Uh, there are some cells that are a little bit more simple. They're called prokaryotic cells. And then there are also more complex cells. They're going to be called eukaryotic cells. I'll get that word down on the slide in just a moment. So let's start with the prokaryotic cells. These include things like bacteria, which are very tiny, and also archaea. Archaeal cells, you might not have heard of these before. They're about the same size as bacteria, and they live in sort of unusual environments. They live in really harsh conditions, like um, down in the ocean, at the bottom of the ocean, near thermal vents where it's really hot. They kind of they live in that boiling water. Um, another place that archaeal cells might live is in your intestines. Uh, we'll come back to these later on in the semester. For now, just trying to kind of get the idea across. These are tiny cells and they're relatively simple. What do we mean by that? When we look at their internal structure, they don't really have a whole lot of specialized structures inside. So they don't have a nucleus and they don't have organelles. We'll see what those are in just a minute. They do have some DNA. So they do still have genes. They still follow those general rules. They have a plasma membrane. They have DNA. They have ribosomes. Um, what, they, what they do have for protection is an extra layer around them. They tend to have something called a cell wall, and that provides kind of a rigid enclosure that they can hang out in. Okay, so that's a prokaryotic cell. Let's talk about the other variety, the more complex type of cell, eukaryotic cells. All of the cells of the human body are eukaryotic cells. So what's the big difference here? Okay, we have a special structure in our cells called a nucleus. This is where the DNA resides. So let me get down a picture. Okay, look at this cell right here. This is kind of a typical animal cell. And in purple right here, the sphere, the sphere is what is enclosing the DNA of this cell. So jump over to the prokaryotic cell here. The DNA was just kind of floating freely in the cytosol. Not so in this case. Over here, it's packaged up very neatly in a nucleus. When you look at the internal structure here, you'll see a bunch of other things going on in the cytosol. All of these special structures are called organelles. So eukaryotic cells have organelles. That's probably the biggest difference between these two types of cells. So given that eukaryotic cells are a bit more complex, uh, this is where we're going to put most of our focus for this chapter. What we're going to do is walk through each of these structures. We're going to start out uh, with the plasma membrane in yellow. We're going to talk about what's that made of, what does it do, and then we'll move inside. We'll talk about the nucleus, we'll talk about each of these other organelles, and we'll just kind of walk through and learn about what, what cells do.